Slump. Hello everybody, it's Slump here, and today I've got Minecraft Java Edition on the Steam Deck for you. It's super cool, super fun. I've been playing it for a few weeks now, and I've been having a great time with it. I'm going to be showing you how to set up today, and I'm also going to be showing you gameplay of it. Um, I'm recording this raw on the Steam Deck right now, so if you've ever wondered what the Steam Deck microphones sound like, there's two of them, if you've ever wondered what they sound like, this is it. So you'd be a judge of how they sound like. Um, you're going to want PolyMC. This is a third-party launcher from Minecraft. You don't want the official launcher because compared to this, it's very lackluster in terms of its features. And it's just a complete bitch to get working on here with the Steam Deck. It doesn't work uh, very well at all. It takes a lot of work, especially if you want multiple instances and mods. So PolyMC is what you want. This is super easy to install. What you do is you go to the Dis Discover application, applications right here, and then type in PolyMC. Click this. You're going to want the stable version of it, not the beta version unless you know what you're doing, but 99% of the people watching this will want the stable version. Once that's installed, uh, you can launch it. I can launch it from here. Where is it? There we go. And first thing to do is click settings, go to Minecraft, click start Minecraft maximized, and close the launcher after game windows opens. Because if you're going to be playing this in Steam OS mode, uh, this is what you're going to want to do. I'll show you how to put in the Steam OS mode later. But right now, just click Start Minecraft Maximize and close the launcher after the game window opens. Java, these are memory settings I have for it. It shouldn't matter too much. I don't even know what PermGen does, but this stuff, it just seems to run well. So, 4 gigs is like the minimum for like mods, and then 6 gigs is kind of where you get to the point of minimal returns for how much memory you give it. After six gigs, it doesn't really do anything more to add any more memory to it. So just set it to like this and you'll be good. It's weird, I know, but just leave it like that. And then Java should be installed on here. You're gonna want Java 17, which is the latest version of it. And that's what you need for like the latest versions of Minecraft. But you can change the version if you want here uh, to older versions of Java if you wanna play older versions of Minecraft because you can play any version of Minecraft on here as I'll show you very shortly after I show you accounts, which I'm actually not gonna click into because that's gonna show my email and then I'd have to censor it. But this is just where you sign into your Microsoft or Mojang account, whatever you use to play in Minecraft Java Edition. After that, you should be good to go. You can create an instance. So click add an instance. You can get any version of Minecraft you want. They're all here. Just gonna click 1.19. You can also install versions of Minecraft from um, this built-in launcher, or I guess, like mod area here. All these mod packs that you can install with just a few clicks, super easy. Um, that's really cool, but we're just gonna do this. And then you're probably gonna want one of these, a launcher to have mods because we will be using performance mods because vanilla performance with Minecraft, especially nowadays, after 1.12, it got really bad and you need a really beast PC to get this uh, game running on your vanilla settings without any performance mods well. Performance mods are what's really going to make it worth playing on here. So I'm going to be using Fabric, that's what I've been using. Uh, this is where you can get Sodium, which I think is probably the best performance mod. It beats Optifine, I'm sure you've heard of Optifine. That's with Forge. So if you want Optifine, you can get Forge. But we're going to be using Sodium on Fabric. So click Fabric, uh, 1.1.19, name it something. I think that's a perfectly fine name, and then click OK. And then um, Edit Instance. So you can see you have all the versions here, of all the stuff that you need to get my hair working. It's all there for you. And then mods, this is your mods folder. Super easy, you can install mods straight from the launcher here from ModDrift or CurseForge. Curse um, to add a mod from here, you just click it. Select mod for download, you can uh, add multiple and then click OK. And then installs all of them for you. You can also install them or install them a uh, traditional way. You've probably done before this or you just download the .jar file from a website and then you can put it into this mod area if you've installed the, um, or downloaded the .jar file from somewhere else if you don't want to do it through a launcher, which is perfectly fine, teach the round. You can get resource packs as well, shader packs with the Iris mod with Fabric, um, Optifine with Forge. Uh, I wouldn't recommend doing shaders on here because they just don't work well on the Steam Deck. Uh, they're really GPU intensive, and at least if you're playing at 1080p, which is what we're going to be doing today, and that's what I've been playing at, it's not going to run well, at least if you want 60 FPS. 
So I would not touch shaders. I've tried a lot of like vanilla, really low end shaders, but none of them seem to run smoothly. So just go past here because you probably won't want shaders. And then settings, this is all default stuff. So this should all be good. Um, close that. And then before I get into the gameplay, I'm gonna be showing you the mods that I'll be using for the gameplay on my own personal configuration that I've been playing for weeks now. Um, most of these mods here for performance. I have a few that are for convenience, like this Fallen Tree one. Everyone knows Fallen Tree. It's great. But um, um, I'll just go down the list here. We've got Chunky. This one's huge. What this does is it pre-generates all the chunks around you. Minecraft loads terrain in chunks, just like grids of blocks. And when you're walking around without this mod, you'll get like frame rate drops from like 60 to 55 FPS, just walking around as it's loading chunks in and out of like the memory. And what this does is this smooths it out so that you're walking around and it's super smooth. This is critical to getting the experience on the Steam Deck super smooth and enjoyable without these stutters. And because these are what you'll feel playing vanilla really Minecraft without these mods. So this is why you want um, performance enhancing mods. And I'll show you how to use Chunky uh, once you get into the gameplay. Um, sodium, this one and Chunky are the only ones you have to actually touch. After you install them, the rest you can just install straight from here and then you don't have to touch them ever again. Um, that's just a um, convenience thing. Cloth config, you might need to install that to work with fabric. If a mod doesn't work, it'll probably tell you. So don't worry about that. Entity culling, that hides entities from rendering when they're not uh, being rendered because you're not looking at them. So if like, they're behind the wall or something, that'll help performance. This is just fabric stuff. Falling tree, iris is the shaders thing. Though I don't have any shaders installed because shaders don't run good on here. At least all the ones I've tested, I've tested quite a lot. Lithium is good, that's the performance one you want. Get that. Optical zoom, that's just the zoom button because um, fabric doesn't, and or I guess sodium really, doesn't come with like the zoom button that you have with Optifine. Optifine comes with zoom and shaders and capes and all that stuff. To get those extra features, you need to install separate things like iris and the zoom thing, which can be kind of annoying. But and at the end of the day, I think fabric is better than Forge and Optifine, so it's worth it. So I just recommend getting the stuff I have. So that's lithium. A memory leak, uh, this can happen uh, on some configurations on PCs. Don't know if it happens on the Steam Deck or not, but I'll get this just in case, why not, it doesn't hurt. Uh, mod menu, just a nice menu to show you all the mods you have. Sodium, you want this, this is probably the biggest one. This is like, um, it'll give you all the visual settings and the graphic settings and the Minecraft settings uh, um, where you can choose, you know, customize everything. I'll be going through that. Starlight also helps with performance a lot. And that's just for that, that's just for me. So I think we're good to go. Um, one last thing before we get into the gameplay though, I'm gonna go into Steam and show you how to get this working in Steam OS mode. Uh, not in desktop, because we're in desktop right now. But to get this working in Steam OS mode, you have to add it to Steam first. It's really easy. Uh, you go to here, add a non-Steam game, and then PolyMC, click that, add selected programs. And it looks really ugly right here because when you add a non-Steam game to Steam, you have to set the custom artwork yourself. I've done that here at Fall Guys. And as you can see, it looks beautiful. It goes a long way compared to just this. This is ugly, this is hideous. But what you can do is you can go to a website like Steam Grid DB and download all this stuff here. There's a lot of files you do have to download to get it look, looking nice because of all the parts of it. There's a logo here, background here. There's an icon which will pop up here. All this stuff you have to get. But it's all pretty easy to find here. Yeah, everything you need right here, as you can see. So just grab the ones you want. You can customize it the way you want, which is really neat. Uh, the Steam Deck fan's going hard right now. And to change it, you can just set custom background. Um, looks like it's already directed to where I want it to go. Um, I clicked background, so I probably want Hero. There we go. Change the logo. Uh, logo. There we go. Go to the icon here, and then this is not the same spot. I have a nice folder for it right here. Uh, icon. So as you can see, you can make it look different if you want, but this is the way I've done it for the purpose of this video. Uh, I actually don't want this, so I'm just gonna get rid of this. This is how you get rid of it if you want to. And there you go. So now, uh, you've been waiting long enough, let's get into the gameplay. Okay, so we're in the game now. Um, this is footage I'm talking over. 
uh, because it was an actual recording Steam Deck setup before I was just recording on it raw. But here I'm talking over it, and it loads pretty fast, which is nice. I don't know how much chunky comes into play of how fast it loads or not. It might do some stuff, but even without it, it still loads fast. So that's good. And we're in the game now. And we start off at kind of like 50, 50 FPS. And then like 20 seconds in, you get to a good 60 FPS. Uh, the chunks are not going to load until you look at them. So you have to spin your camera around like once. Make sure you get everything in view. And that's when it's all going to start to load in. Because that's how uh, sodium works. And the first thing you want to do with chunky is slash chunky center. That's going to center the rendering area um, to your location. And do slash chunky radius. And you can pick how wide you want the radius of blocks that it covers to be. So 3,000 is pretty large. Probably just start at like 1,000. And then after that, do slash chunky start. That will start up. It's going to take a while. The game might get kind of laggy. So definitely wouldn't want to do this while you're trying to fight the Ender Dragon or something important like that. Uh, you can pause the game while you're waiting for it to load. Just press escape and have the pause menu pop up. And then you're good to go. So you don't have to worry about like a creeper blowing up you or anything like that. Um... 1,000 block radius will take like 15 minutes, and then 3,000 will take like two hours. It's going pretty fast here because I already done it before this. Um, but yeah, definitely you can just like pause it and then walk away and come back when it's done. So I'm going to cut to when it's done here. Boom. Okay, now I'm going to show you my settings with sodium. And we're at 16 chunks right now. I've been playing for, uh, on my personal time with this, at 12 chunks because that's super smooth. But 16 chunks, I just want to see what that was like. Because it would be nice to play 16 chunks. So just testing out right here. Uh, quality. You can do whatever you want here. I would just turn weather to fast. Because fancy, when it rains or snows, it can cause a little bit of micro stuttering. So I would just leave it to fast. I have entity distance up here, 125%. That really shouldn't uh, cause much of a difference. Performance don't change anything. Advanced don't change anything. Shader packs. I wouldn't recommend doing this if you're playing 1080p. If you're doing an 800p. Uh, if like you're on a Steam Deck screen. Uh, that might work better, but I've tested a bunch of low-end shaders packs here, and they just do not run well. Even just ones that have simple things like shadows or leaves moving or god rays, they don't turn out well. So probably just avoid shader packs. Here we're flying around um, with the 16 chunk render distance. Now, as you can see, it's smooth mostly, but there are still some stutters. But if you've played Minecraft before on Java, you're probably used to stutters when you're flying around. It's when you're pushing the game the most. Um, Pretty much any configuration you have on any PC, it probably will have some stutters flying around. I'm drinking a Speed 2 potion right now. Uh, just try to mimic a gameplay circumstance where you can push the performance of the game a little bit harder, make it a little bit tougher, because I am rendering more stuff in my vision now, now that my FOV is increased. So that's pushing it even further. But it's still pretty good. Definitely playable. Probably gain similar performance to what most people have on their Minecraft setups. So that's really good to see. Of course, you are going to get still some stutters. If you want really smooth experience, I would set it to 12 because I don't know if I mentioned it before, but I've been playing this game for a few weeks now and it's been at 12 render distance and it is butter smooth. Like there's no drops at all. Um, but 16, you are going to get some drops. After this video, I'm going to try playing around with 14 chunks for a while. And this is the part where I found a woodland mansion. I had never found one of these before in survival. So I was pretty stoked that I found one out here while I was just testing, recording gameplay footage for this video. Pretty crazy, because I'd looked before, but they always spun like super far out. But the thing is with this world, I did something I'd never done before, where I started like basically where I spawned, uh, pretty close to the village, just squatted in there for a while, got really geared up, and then I lightered super far out to it's like 70,000 blocks or something, really far, negative 70,000. And now I'm out here, and maybe that's why I was able to find one. Uh, I technically did find it in creative because I'm flying around here. But I would have found in survival anyways, but I just landed at this area, so I haven't really done much. So that's why you'll see when I go to my home base area, there's pretty much nothing there. Pretty uh, boring to look at. But even as we're just walking around here, there are still some drops. So I recommend probably going to lower. You probably don't want 16. I'm going to try 14 after this video, like I said. Okay, now it's time to get crazy with it. Kind of wacky. We're going to be turning off V-Sync, see how the game runs like that. See how much headroom we have when we're not V-Synced and capped at 60 FPS. So if you have like a G-Sync or Free Sync monitor or whatever, or maybe you just like playing a screen tearing, I don't know, but um, you can do it on V-Synced and just like this. And we're getting around 100 frames on average, which is pretty neato. We're getting pretty close to the end of the video here. I just want to show you a bug that I've been having with the game, a glitch. 
And after that, I'll show you how multiplayer runs on here. Uh, spoiler alert, it runs really well. But the bug I've been having is when I'm in my inventory or like opening a chest, the transparent area around the inventory panel that I'm pointing to here with my mouse can kind of like not work properly. Like it, when I, it can like work and then flash like a lot brighter. And then like, like the transparent bulk effect got removed. So there's no filter on the rest of the game world. It's as if you're like not in the inventory panel, but the panel's still there, but the area around it is not. It's, it's kind of hard to explain. I want it to happen for this video, but the one time I actually want it to happen, it didn't happen. So just letting you know. Uh, and now we're going into multiplayer. Uh, chess in Mindplex and Hypixel. I'm not really a big server person. I don't play on servers that much, um, but they work. They run really well. Even in these lobbies where I have a whole bunch of people on screen, uh, it's very nice. Um, I remember playing as a kid when I used to do servers more. Uh, the computer I was playing on definitely was not getting this kind of performance. So being able to play this on the go with this kind of frames, super cool. Shows how cool this Steenic is. And I'm sure you know, you're not gonna be getting Job Edition on like the Switch or your phone, unless there, there's an app on Android, but most people aren't gonna use that. And it's not very good anyways. The performance is bad, but this is probably the best way to play Job on the go now. Um, unless you're carrying a laptop, but come on, we're not carrying laptops here. You know what I mean? Like handhelds, this is the way to do it. It's super cool. You can play high pixel, like under the bed sheets or on the beach. It's insane. So yeah, it runs well here in this crowd area for all these people. Even with 16 chunks, there's not that much chunks right on the server probably. The render distance probably set to lower on the server side. So that's not a problem. That is going to be it for this video. I tried to keep it brief. I tried to keep it short quick, efficient, try to get you everything you need to know as fast as possible. And hopefully I succeeded in doing that. This video was a lot of fun making. It was a long time in making. I've been testing Minecraft for the past few weeks now. And if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more Steam Deck videos, support my channel, like the video, subscribe, hit the notification bell, stay tuned when I upload more videos, share with your friends, comments, all that stuff helps me out with the YouTube algorithms. That'd be great of you to do that. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next Steam Deck video.